the shadows way too long You always thought that you were weak But babe, you're wrong Good morning. Spring is really just the best time to be in New York. You know, before the bugs, the humidity, all that comes. So in the morning, I like to just come to my deck, do a little meditation, just kind of prepare my day. And today is Mother's Day. So happy, well, belated Mother's Day, because by the time this comes out, it'll be way later. Happy belated Mother's Day to all you mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers, all you people out there who put up with so much. I know dads put up with a lot too, but, but mom, seriously, you guys put up with so much. And I know I gave my mom so much trouble, especially when I was like in my teens, early teens. I started this gang called the, called the ninjas with my friends Steve and John. Shout out to you guys wherever you are. It was just stupid things like ride our bike all night around town which was Fort Dodge, Iowa and throw eggs at my dad's competitor restaurants the sea dragon i think sorry about that I, I was dumb i was a kid kids don't throw eggs at things throw them in a pan and eat them that's what you should do anyway most kids get sent to the room i got sent to china well that wasn't the only reason i'm sure it has something to do with it me being super unruly so moms they really do put up with so much so again a huge shout out to all the moms out there happy again happy belated mother's day to you all and today uh, i'm going to i'm going home for lunch and i wanted to just bring food home but asian moms want to cook even like when it's their day they, they want to cook i wanted to come back before mother's day so on the way there i'm gonna go and buy some groceries some oranges things they like bring it home to them and uh, have a good day with the family but before that i get some breakfast i miss having cereal in a hot pot pot double the flavors Double the fun. I told you guys before, cereal is my ultimate weakness. I still cannot walk past a cereal aisle at a grocery store. I'm not strong enough. I'm one of those people that will open a box of cereal and eat all of it and wonder why the box is so small. That's why I'm so happy to I found the Magic Spoon, which of course is the sponsor of this video. And here in this pot, I've got cocoa and I've got peanut butter. This is my favorite flavor. I had it for dinner last night. I had it for dinner the night before and I had it for breakfast the day before that. What's great about this is zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, four net carbs and only 140 calories per serving. It's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low carb, no GMO and it's keto friendly. Best thing is it actually tastes good. They got all sorts of flavors. I mentioned I'm eating cocoa and peanut butter. They got fruity, frosted, cinnamon, blueberry, and they drop limited edition flavors all the time. I think last time it was birthday cake. Sounds good. And what I love about them is they put their money where their mouth is. So they have this thing called the 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like your cereal for whatever reason, you got your money back. So if you want to give this a try, go to my link down below and build your own variety box. Use my promo code Dumpling. You're going to get $5 off. So again, use my link down below, enter promo code Dumpling, or just go to magicspoon.com slash Dumpling. Hmm. Hope we have dumplings today. You shouldn't doubt yourself because you're a work of art. You, you should know that you are perfect with those flaws. Yeah, you better step. Way too long. Ooh, carpet. This looks so much better than the last time I was here, this hallway. Hello. Hi, it's Lila. Hello. Hi, you. My little Hello. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Mom's very proud of this. She planted uh, tomatoes here. Flushing looks pretty today. It's about to rain later, so it's gonna get even better. Oh, it smells so good. Smells so good. Hello? Hi. Wish smell of vision was the things I could share with you, but it's not. You guys gonna have to trust me on this. Hmm. No. It's really sweet. No shower flavor whatsoever. A lot of dishes. Hong hong and garlic. Hong is a good vegetable, especially in a hot pot. Celery and dried bean curds. 
salmon, sea or sea, uh, sea, cucumber. sea cucumber, and duck, and lumpy. Has anybody ever managed to leave their Asian family gathering or visit their parents without just bags of food to take home. So far, I haven't been able to accomplish that. Really good to see my parents again. Yep, raining now. Let's go home, bright and early, heading to Washington, D.C. tomorrow. Good morning, just got to DC and learning from the last time I was here, first place I came to, Ethiopian breakfast. This is a quick day trip to DC, getting in early and then leaving later tonight. Uh, Jesse is with me. Did you know this can be this big? No, I had no idea. What? Why'd you order three? I didn't. I thought they were going to be small dishes. All right, this is anything but small. This is so insanely beautiful, though. Ethiopian food, last time I was in DC, I had it for the second time in my life. So amazing. So we got three dishes. We got the uh, Tibbs Ethiopian beef, which is something we got last time. That's the one with the cubes of beef. There's the Quanta fur fur. That's the one with jerk beef, onions, some green peppers in there. And then the Ethiopian style with breakfast and veggies with some bosa on the side which is like a basically a fried dumpling it looks like a samosa and all this of course comes with a bath towel shaped injera so a lot of these dishes the injera is cooked in as well and i know that you're supposed to eat this with your hands but just for the sake of filming oh my God. i knew from last time Every time I get to come to DC, I have to start with Ethiopian food. So if you guys don't know, DC has the largest Ethiopian population outside of Africa. And the most unique food item here is the injera, which is the best. These are the uh, super spongy, fluffy, fermented bread that is very integrated into the cuisine. What I love about this bread is look at all the little nooks and crannies and basically like a little bread sponge to soak up. All that delicious ingredients and sauce and meat. I never had this green sauce last time. <coughs> oh yeah, that is just perfect with this dish. I would just eat that in the injera on its own. This is the breakfast veggie scramble. It's slightly mild, very garlicky, tons of spice building. Look at this. This some both just soaked in all that great seasoning. This is awesome. Lentils on the inside and such a flaky, crusty shell. Lentils, onions, more spices. I'm just gonna let this sit in this little pocket of oils and just let that soak in. This is the jerk beef and it has like the injera mixed in as well. Oh my God, this is so good. With these little pieces of these, basically food sponge mixed in. Not a single drop of flavor is escaping this dish. It's tomatoey, spicy, and this is the jerk beef that comes with it. Mm. Oh, that jerk beef is amazing. Can you invite some of this green sauce to the party? I think my favorite is the Tib Ethiopian beef, the cubes of beef, that is the best. I love the jerk beef too. Anything with beef, love it. Overall, Injera is the star. I mean, I love meat, but in Ethiopian cuisine, this right here, this is the highlight. And I love how it folds. Seriously, it's like a beautiful bath towel. I want to just wrap this around my shoulders. I hope I can find something just as good as this in New York. But if you come to DC, Ethiopian food, gotta put that on your list.
This is awesome. Just sitting here eating such an amazing food. Sipping on some spiced tea with honey. <sighs> Welcome to DC to me. We'll tell you see what I'm gonna eat next. Which one's your favorite? I like that one, the jerk. Right, like this one, the jerk one? The jerk beef. That's really good. And this is like really this good, the, the really scramble. Good. They're all really good. Everything, this place is so good. This beef is super tender. The spices, everything, the bread. Could you just eat the bread? I that... could eat that on its own. Right. This is Ben, by the way. He's the owner. Are you the cook too? Everything. Everything. It's family owned. It's family owned. It's, it's wonderful. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much for, for providing this. No problem. I want to ask you, like, why, why is injera so important in Ethiopian food? It's, it's the main traditional uh, food. It's like a main course. This is the main course. Without injera. Yeah, and this is used for everything, like a tablecloth, a plate. It could be, a serve, food is served on top of it. I noticed today, food is cooked with it. Yes, that too. It has different names, uh -huh. ingredients, everything. I call it a food sponge. I hope that doesn't offend no, no. <laughs> anybody. Like I think it's a food sponge. It just soaks it up like everything so well. Pancake. Yeah, it's so great. Thank you so much for the delicious food. Made cantaloupe frost? I want that. Calamansi juice? We're here at Purple Patch Pantry and Patio. This place looks amazing. It looks like this great combination of Filipino food and dessert. There's so much dessert stuff here, and there's so much amazing drink options. Mm. I'll make you pucker up to calamansi juice stuff. The pieces are me, it's really much bigger than what you traditionally find in sizzling shizek. But it's tender and delicious though. The quality but, of the meat is better. You think the quality of the meat is better? Less like the side pieces are more like, you know, big meaty pieces. I really like this. Great creaminess from the eggs. The meat is nice and tender. Got that great kick of vinegar. So they don't use like the pig head in here. Yeah, there's not a lot of head meat. It doesn't it's look like all, there's, yeah, there's any head meat. It just, just looks like a regular pork. Personally, I like the head meat. I like the ears. But this is also really, really good. The different cuts of meat, you get some fat, some lean. There's nice crunch from the chilies and the onions. Great smoky flavor as well. Mm. Fatty pieces are so good, especially. I got no complaints. That's delicious. And it's much spicier than a lot of the other sea steaks um, I've tried. And this is really glorious. So it's ube ice cream, ube waffle, with some crispy lechon pieces on top. And typically, oh my God, pour some syrup over the lechon. So usually the waffle comes with Filipino fried chicken and the pancake comes with um, the lechon, but I asked him if we could just have the lechon with the waffles, cause I'm a waffles over pancakes guy. I'll hinge my jaw a little bit, excuse me. I don't think I can unhinge my jaw like you. How good is that? Oh my God, really good. Oh, the waffle's amazing too. So you get a slight crunch from the waffle, also a slight crunch from the lechon, then it just melts, melts all over your mouth. Did you ever think you would, you would like pig? pork and the ice cream together. <laughs> you gotta come and get the lechon. I'm sure the Filipino fried chicken is amazing as well, but this is so gloriously delicious right now.
It's like an air pocket, the lechon. You crunch through the outside, it's almost like nothing but juice in there. That's basically like a lechon grape. You snap through, it's just all juicy and melty, good stuff. Wow, this is a great dish. This is my favorite dish here, 100%. Come here and get this. Only thing is, it's not on the menu, so I actually had to ask for the lechon with the waffles. I mean, I'm sure the pancakes is amazing too. I'm Patrice, I'm the owner of the restaurant. Well, Patrice, your food is delicious. <laughs> Would you like to be on my show? Oh my gosh. Hi, Patrice. Hi. You're the owner. You're half Irish and half Filipino. I am. Who's on the Irish side? Uh, my father's Irish. My your father's Irish. Irish. Your mother's Filipino. Yes. Where'd you learn cooking from? My mom. Your mom? mom well, your mom must be proud. Get the lechon and eat it with ice cream. I don't think I've ever told people to go eat pork with ice cream before. I've but, never heard of that. But I think I, it works though. It really works. All right, we gotta eat up because we got a huge sandwich in front of us. <laughs> We're about to go eat a, a pit beef sandwich. And then after that, as something special. Oh, you already know, you're selling the thumbnail. It's gonna be a massive big plate of seafood. Blue crabs, to be specific. Pioneer pit beef. Apparently pit beef is something I've been missing out living in the Northeast all these years. So I think I'm around Baltimore somewhere. And I heard this is the place to go for the best pit beef. And if you don't know what a pit beef is, it's basically roast beef that's roasted over charcoal. This glorious, beautiful thing right there. When you see like a option of getting regular or super, do you want to be regular man or superman? Think about that. Well, do you smell that smoke? It smells so good. I feel like I'm at a barbecue, like in a Texas barbecue. That's what I'm smelling right now. But it's all for this roast beef. This is it. You got super sub fries and gravy regular. How long do you guys smoke this for? Uh, a couple hours. A couple hours? What kind of wood? Any kind. Any kind? Fine. Nice, nice. This smells so good, man. Yeah. Thank you. Holy cheese, it looks good. Jesse, welcome to Eating on the Hood. Back to this again. I forgot you were part of Eating on the Hood experience before. Oh, it's smaller than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Is this fun? I guess it looks like so much, it looks so big on the pictures. Whoa. So I told them just put whatever condiment on there they think is good. Horseradish, barbecue sauce, whoa. Just a mound of roast beef. And you could get this medium rare or medium. Of course, the guy who cuts it recommended medium. And then we also got gravy fries. Whoa, that is a lot of gravy on these fries. Mm. Those are really good gravy fries. Yeah, they're really, really good. That's really good, right? Fresh fries with the skin. I love the skin. But this thing, holy moly. Look at that. Here, have the first bite. Oh my God, really? How are you going to do this? Do you have a plan? It's that big. It's going to go in. Mm. Really? It's so good. So good? I love the horseradish. Couple things. Okay. I think first thing, we should have got medium rare. You agree? I agree with that. So that's my suggestion to all of you guys who are getting this. Even though it's tender, you could tell it could be tenderer if it was medium rare. Right. It still, is, yeah, it still is really tender. Mm -hmm. I love the horseradish and I like the smoky flavor. Yeah. With that said, this is flipping amazing. This is as if Arby's went out. Let's say Gordon Ramsay had a Kitchen Nightmares episode with with an Arby's and just like you know revamped their entire menu and made it even better. This tastes like just like a much better version, like a supremely better version of a traditionally regular roast beef sandwich. Is also good on its own, but this is amazing. So smoky, so incredibly tender. You need the sauces. The sauce combination is very, very important. 100%, you gotta have horseradish on this. Barbecue sauce is amazing. I need to try a medium rare version. We only got one because we're actually going to like another big meal, but I think we need, we need another one of these. Should we get another one? I think we should get another Second medium rare. Round. Second round. Second round. Let's do it. All right. Medium rare, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. So this is gonna be a little more bloody. Okay. Yes. Mm. This looks so freaking good. This is the medium rare. Here you go. Thank you. All right, you ready for this? I'm ready. Holy. <laughs> mm. 
this so is much, it. so much better. This is that medium rare, so tender. Mm -hmm. Just as smoky. Bun is great, crunchy onion, provides a little difference in texture. So the sauce I got a little different, a little tiger sauce, which is a combination of mayo and, and, and horseradish and some salt and pepper. This is very simply sauce. I could eat this nonstop. From now on, whenever I'm going through Baltimore, DC area, I'm coming here to get this. Also, I want to say, super friendly people working there too. This is it. This is the primary reason why we're here. Avery's Maryland Grill. It's blue crab season. You want blue crabs? You come to Maryland. You want Maryland blue crabs? You come here. That's what people tell me. A lot of stuff on the menu, but what I am here for, all you can eat crabs. There's option A, B, C, C plus D. This is actually really cool. So you sit down, they put the paper here. This is where the crab will go. And they actually have a little fireplace when it gets cold here. So forget candlelight. They got fireplace light. It's even romantic. Her. Roman romantic her. Option D basically includes everything from A to C plus. So there's crab, there's snow crab, there's crab soup, there's fresh, hus puppies, corn bread, coleslaw, corn, watermelon, shrimp, fried baby clam strips, steamed shrimp, steamed clams, and of course the snow crabs and the blue crabs. I think my first plate, I want a little bit of everything. First tray of seafood is here and take a look at that. Ain't that something pretty. So the blue crab is shipped in every single day. So that is definitely the freshest and what I am here for today. So here's how you open a blue crab. This right here, I call the bottom of the crab. You dig it out, ugh, right there, like so, and just open up the crab, revealing all the best stuff. And people usually throw those away. I can't stress this enough. Put some lemon juice on that and yeet the tamale and then just take it out. Yeah, the yellow stuff. It's the best part. It's the most delicious, most flavorful part. I just learned this. Jesse never had the inside of a crab before. Like, you never had the, the guts. Yeah, I've had crabs, but I never like ate it like this. Okay, here, like I'm gonna crab. give you a piece to eat, okay? And you tell me if you like it. Mm, that's good. Isn't it good? It tastes like the insides, and I love that. I it, love that flavor. It doesn't have more of a like umami, like a natural um, it's umami. It's so good. This is the best way to eat a crab. This is the best part. Like, you see this right here, Jesse? Mm -hmm. This? Ooh, the yellow stuff. The yellow stuff right here. A little splash of lemon juice. Kid you not, take a bite of that. Mm. Oh my God. Is that not just as good or even better than the meat itself? That's so good. Right? You know, in Japan, that stuff is what they dip the crab meat in. Mm -hmm. So they call it the miso. You see, when you crack it apart, right there, that's all the best meat. You can dunk this in butter or just a little bit of lemon juice, whatever you want. Sweet heaven. And it's all you can eat. They actually also have their own seasoning. They call this J seasoning, which I think is their signature secret recipe. Oh, that's awesome. Try it some of the seasoning to make. It's really good. It's so good. It's spicy, it's savory. Add that with a splash of lemon juice. Oh, the blue crabs are so good. I mean, I'm a fan of snow crab, but in the face of fresh Maryland blue crab, no comparison. I'm gonna eat the snow crab and then just focus my entire attention on the blue crab. It's just so sweet. I don't even feel like I need any seasoning or butter or anything. Is this your favorite thing we ate today? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I've only had Maryland blue crab once in my life. I forgot how delicate and amazing it tastes. Oh, don't get me wrong. Snow crab is amazing as well. And because you have this great seasoning, it's not like you're just dunking everything into butter, so it's not getting like so heavy and greasy. There's actually a lot of different flavors involved. Dang, Jesse just got serious. 
<laughs> What's so this battle yeah, mode? And the hair goes up, the crap goes down. Dunk it in butter, then dunk it in the seasoning. I think I just found my playlist. Oh, I remember the last time I, I ate blue crab. I remember I didn't like the experience because I really didn't know how to eat these things back then. I didn't know you could eat the insides. So basically all I did was just eat some of the meat that I found on the, around the edge in the claws and it took a long time. So I remember thinking, man, this is, it's, it's, I burn more calories eating this than, than taking in. But as I travel more, I learn to appreciate everything more. And now I'll tell you, this is such a fun and delicious experience. I just found out their, their shrimp is fresh, like freshly steamed shrimp. That's amazing. Usually you go to places and, and they steam shrimp for you. It's just frozen shrimp, but it's fresh shrimp here. Steamed clam and steamed shrimp has arrived. The clam is also covered in that great seasoning. Mmm. No, just these steamed shrimps is incredible. No, you can taste the difference. It's just way bouncier and sweeter. Fresh steamed clams. These you need nothing. Just pop them in your mouth like little sea grapes. <laughs> Yo, know, Jesse, when I was in South Carolina, North Carolina, yeah. when I was in North Carolina, I went to a seafood restaurant. They, they had hush puppies just like these. Mm. They're, they're like honey hush puppies. You had hush puppies before, never right? Had hush puppies. You never had hush puppies? Never. Try a hush puppy. Mm. It's like sweet and salty. It's a must have side when, you, when it comes to seafood. Oh, this is so good. It's crispy on the outside, so warm and sweet and savory. I love these. Mm. My goal today is really just to try everything, tell you guys what to eat and what to order when you come here. And I would recommend the Hush Puppies. Mmm. Corn. Corn on the cob is great. They just put their spices on everything. I just covered in butter and their seasoning. It's sweet, it's buttery, it's juicy, it pops. You can take a little break from the seafood to kind of munch on this. I think we're good. It's getting a little too windy out here, but crabs are amazing. Shrimp is awesome. Food in general is just exceptional. Even though we've been eating all day, just sitting down and have seen all the crab in front of us, gives you like a renewed vigor. You just want to eat more. What was your favorite my, thing here? My favorite were the blue crabs. Blue crabs? Yeah. Did you I like the, the guts? Did you like the, the guts now? The yellow is the best part. Remember guys, have some guts. Like literally, eat some, eat some guts. Final meal of the day. Yeah, you still have space in your stomach? I can still eat. <laughs> okay, so we're at Dolan Uyghur Restaurant. This is a Uyghur place that my buddy Steve highly recommended. I love metal skewers. Let me reiterate. It's just the best because it heats the meat up from the inside as well. This thing, you smell the cumin right away. This is just cumin and little salt. Oh my gosh. Big plate of chicken. Hello, baby. I wish you guys could get a whiff of this. I really, really do. Thank you. Mm. So juicy. Perfectly seasoned. This is the meat stuffed pancake. I've been dreaming about this. I've been missing this. And this is the big plate of noodles. So this is really the small plate of noodles, but it's still a big plate of noodles. Big chunks of potatoes, juicy, ooh, tender pieces of chicken covered. I've never seen this thing covered in chilies like this before though. With handmade noodles on the bottom. These are the pearl noodles because they are like a treasure. These are little bits of noodles. It's almost like yarn or palm more like the lamb pizza soup in Xi'an cuisine. Pancake stuffed with beef, peppers, and onions. Look at the juice soaking into the bread. Dunk it into the yogurt. I don't care how bad a day you're having, I'll put a smile on your face. Whoa, this is spicy. Yeah, it's really spicy. Mmm. Like the big plate of chicken never once spicy like this. This is really spicy. The chicken is supremely tender, and so are the potatoes. I really like this one. Mmm. I like the pearl noodles. They're good. What's your favorite so far? 
I like the pearl noodles. Pearl noodles are really good. Mm. Good final meal before we hit the road. But pretty fun day here in DC. The crab was amazing. The Ethiopian breakfast was awesome. Oh, the 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 the, the pit, rib, pit beef. Love. That's it for an amazing food day here in Washington, D.C. All right, we're going to eat and get out of here. And as always, all the places we went to, this is down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.